All right, folks, here we go. We're back after uh, after another skip week. It is uh, uh, Sunday Sketchin'. It is the seventh episode of Sunday Sketchin'. We have a full house for you tonight. As you can see, uh, we're going to be talking Cannibal Kitty tonight. Uh, it is live on Kickstarter. We'll get the link here for you in a bit in the thread, uh, as well as actually take you through the Kickstarter. We'll let uh, our guest of honor uh, talk about the campaign as well, as we always do here. Um, there we go. Hello, I'm Tom Hodgson. What's going on, everybody? Uh, it is the seventh episode of Sunday Sketch, and everybody's back tonight. Uh, and we're, we're going to bring him up first because he was actually first here tonight. Mr. DeBolfo is uh, is joining us. What's going on, at Mr. DeBolfo? What's up? He's got himself a new uh, a new setup. He we can hear him well. He can hear us well. It's all the tech is yeah, working. Man. <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> uh, we have got April Reina sketching up. What's happening, April? Hi, good evening. April's here. Uh, Mr. Kincaid. What's happening? There he is. There he is. He's already well into this. What is he's are, you already got Copics happening Ryan's there? What's going slow on? Down. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I just kind of roughed it out, so Okay. <laughs> well, he, he he traded it before we got on the show, so it's all. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, we weren't sure if she was going to be here, but there she is, Marissa Pope. What's happening? I was like two minutes late. I'm down, Tom. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just Marissa. <laughs> Good Welcome to see you back. too. Crying out loud. Yes, hello. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and tonight's special tense. guest, of course, now the Midwestern edition. Of Mr. Dan Mendoza. How are you, Dan? How's it going, man? I'm good. Good. Good, good, good. So you are you are Midwest now. We we've had some yeah. pretty pretty fair storms of late. How have you like enjoyed those? <laughs> like the one an hour ago. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. I was packing um books and it's just like that shit got loud, dude. I was just like, ooh. But, um yeah, there was that big one that knocked down everybody's trees and everybody's mm -hmm. power and stuff. Like, um, I was in, I was at MegaCon when it went down, but um, but I didn't lose no power. Um, but yeah, I came home to like a couple of trees mm -hmm. just laid out on in my yard. But it's like there was like one, it's like a twenty foot tree just laid the fuck down, and it like I'm like so happy it didn't crash through my house, man. It was crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're you down. At? Where you're you down at? Right He's yeah, he's in Michigan. He's a couple hours south of me, uh, okay. and that's kind of the zone where it, it's really it's kind of weird. Down where Dan is is kind of where the storms go, and sort of above us is where the storms go. We kind of are in this weird pocket in the middle. Oh, nice. but, and so every time I hear about these big storms, I'm like, oh my god, Dan's getting the uh, the introduction <laughs> in a hurry. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah. a welcome to it the Midwest. Yeah, it hasn't been crazy, man, until until that one that came during MegaCon. That was nuts, dude. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Have you, yeah, have yeah, you yeah. ever pooped your pants yet? Because moving from Cali to here, man, I about shit myself the first time I went through the oh. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was the first year we moved here, man, it was just like every night there's just like loud thunder and lightning. And we're just like, wow, this is awesome, you know. And we would just see it outside. It would look like daylight outside. It got so bright. Yeah. It was crazy. Lightning and then was like, just for like yeah. 10 minutes straight. Then it's like nine o'clock at night and the sun's still out. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck is happening here, dude? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I told you this is a whole different world out here, man. All you California people bitching about nothing. Oh, I know California, man. I'm like, oh, they're like, well, we don't have rain. I'm like, well, we have too much. Like, the whole summer would have been nothing but rain, man. It rained all fucking summer over here. And you it got about three months too. until you'll have uh, a few feet of snow. Oh, I can't wait. I I, like, I prefer well, yeah, I. I I don't like summer at all. Like anywhere I move, I'm always like, oh, summer's terrible. So uh, I don't like summer here. Okay, but you went from SoCal yeah, to yeah. Vegas to what Arizona, right? No, I did. I did uh, SoCal to uh, to Seattle to Vegas. Seattle. Yeah, That's and then I came here. Uh, Seattle was was a bummer too, man. It was like I'm like, hell yeah, it's gonna be cloudy all the time. No, it was hot. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> like I gotta go. This is stupid. So. You need to uh, move to, to England, man. Yeah, I went to yeah, I went to England for vacation. But yeah. so so Dan, it, everybody usually gets like the summer house, right? We're going here for the summer. Dan yeah. needs like the winter house. Everywhere, every time it's summer, he needs to go somewhere where it's cold. Yeah. So you you need like those. Uh, yeah. You need to be like Canada, I think. 
Yeah. No, I think he'll be all right. I like. I, I'm, I'm the same way as Dan, dude. I, I'd, I'd much prefer fall and winter. Oh yeah, fall is crazy because I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about any. I don't know nothing about seasons growing up in in, in L. A. You don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, we didn't have oh, yeah. seasons. We had hot and hot and yeah. some cold. Yeah, so you start seeing the leaves turn and stuff, and you're like, oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that pretty? And then, like after a month or so, you're like, maybe I should be doing something about all these leaves on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where you, that's where you throw the neighbor kids a ten spot, and you have them take care of it. Hey, no, yeah. I started. Yeah. I got like a, a big riding mower, so I just started driving over everything and just. <laughs> That's, <laughs> how you do it, right? That's how it's done. Yeah, then I put it. I put them all in a big barrel and and poured gasoline and set it on fire, dude. And I was like, hey, there dude, you go. Dan, wow, no, you man. learned quick. <laughs> you have adapted well to the Midwestern yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, there was one point where I I. I I poured the gas while the fire was going, and then the fi the fire tried to go towards the gas tank. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that again. That's fucking delicious. <laughs> Good thing I'm not <laughs> drinking yet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We were like, um, yeah. I had to get a, one of those little four-wheelers that you drive around the yard and stuff. Um, you know, because for the snow, I don't want to plow shit. I ain't going to shovel nothing. So I got, I bought one with a snow plow on it so I could plow my driveway and other little there you things. Go. But it's so funny. When I first got it, I was just so excited. I'm just driving around all fast drinking and stuff like on thanksgiving i got drunk and i just kept driving around and all fast and stuff and uh, then my buddy uh, cody lockwood that's uh, from cbcs whatever he came over and then we're we're driving around all fast and we're like holding our drinks like holding some beers in our hand and our and it's and it's like it's like 10 degrees outside and we're like our hands are freezing and shit but yeah it's fun <laughs> you see Dan on an episode of Cops getting pulled over by the police on his lawnmower. <laughs> oh, I know. That's how you do it out here. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh yeah. my God. No, 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 we'll, no, no, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep them. chatting here, but let's uh, let's show everybody what's going on here. And and Dan, give everybody uh, a little heads up as to uh, what Campbell Kitty is. Uh, it is live on Kickstarter as well, folks. I'm going to drop the link. Uh, into our feed here in just a second, um, but uh, as we kind of look around at some of the some of the art up close, uh, give everybody a little uh, a little background on the book. Yeah, Cannibal Kitty is a is a character that uh, that uh, Nightmare Lynch made. Um, uh, it, it started off basically as uh, you know she wanted a character that's that's like her in in an issue of Sad Girl, and, and I'm I'm such a control freak that I just I just couldn't. Um, I just we just couldn't agree on shit, so I was just like, well, just make your own book, and you write it and stuff, and I'll draw it because I I can't I I'm too much of a control freak and shit. So so that's what she did, man. And this is like it's the third campaign now, but it's it's a uh, it's basically this uh, shape shifting cat girl that eats people. You know, that's like the quick <laughs> picture of it. But um, but yeah, um, the story it started off in in the sad girl universe, which is like a post apocalyptic world, but um. Uh, through uh, through like some situations that happened in issue two, she got pushed into um, like a like the year 1990. So she's learning to adapt with like normal 1990 lifestyles and shit, while at the same time starving. You know, like she she needs to kill people. You know, but how does but, you know how does she do it without people knowing kind of shit? So yeah. So it's a love story. Yeah, yeah. It, kind of, it, it actually <laughs> it is. <laughs> It started off with she met this she met this monster uh, named Scratch, and um, and and why they, it's funny why they were actually having sex he he scratched a, a hole into time with his with his claws because that's his ability and he, and he, he basically I hate when that happens he basically orgasmed him her into 1990. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I have a new, new life now. It's awesome. Yeah, so so yeah, so she she communicates with them in dreams or she sees them like in TVs and it's just little things like that. But it's it's kind of like she's she's it's like a quantum leap thing where she's trying to get back home to get to him. She accidentally Very fell cool. into some MC Hammer pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she's she's right now she's staying at some kid's house, some teenage kid's house. Uh, his name is Nigel, and he's like a little, a little, uh, little ska band listening, little geeky kid and stuff. And you know, he's just teaching all about the '90s life. So you know, they have Blockbuster Video, and they go to arcades and. 
just all the all the cool shit that used to nostalgic. Yeah, all the nostalgic stuff, you know, that that we all remember from that era. Are are we destined now? Have we have we have we gone through? Uh, have we gone through the eighties to a point now where all the nostalgia is going to start landing in the nineties? Is that is that where we're at? I think I don't so. Know. I've seen mullets back. So, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I saw children with mullets at. Yeah, that's, cool. that's, yeah. that's a, like uh, she went to a birthday party thing again. Yeah, uh, she went to a birthday party and there was like all these kids running around with mullets. I'm like, what the hell is happening here, dude? Well, that could be a Midwest thing as well. I mean, that's yes, they were crocs it's huge in Canada too. Yeah, it's a big croc fest over here. People love wearing crocs. Oh, dude, don't these. even get me started on the crocs. Do you I have, have crocs? I have I have Ooh. fur lined crocs. <laughs> get the heck out of here. <laughs> they're like, basically they're slippers, right? But they're crocs. So yeah. yeah. I can't do it. The bigger yeah, question is anybody really surprised? <laughs> they're fantastic. I, I, they're fantastic. I am a little. <laughs> I'm not. That's funny. Now, Dan, I'm gonna say you you said the character, you know, has to kill people. I, yeah. I've known you a really long time, right? Yeah. Every character you create, man, has to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah, so it, it just worked out well, you know, with Nightmare. She's like, okay, this is a girl that she's a, she's this, she could turn into a little cat. She can be human form. She could, you know what I mean? She's just all mystical with, into like magic, dark magic and stuff. But yeah, so she's like, she has a demon beast mode and all this stuff. And then she's like, oh, and she eats people. I'm like, perfect. So that fits into my universe. Right, it fits into everything yeah. I've known Dan to create. Yeah, except for how the Sagro, and Sugar Pop don't eat people. That's but, true. Uh, yeah, Sagro is all in the same universe. So yeah, is it is it actually all of that stuff is a shared universe? It's all a shared universe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the Tales of Ill book that we're finally fulfilling that took nine months to be printed in Singapore. Um, um yeah it's it was like a 254 book and and we just it was just nothing but short stories of all three of those girls interacting and all that stuff you know so it was cool nice 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 and then so we do have we're going to show this too uh we've got uh dan's going to be doing some work yeah, i'm working uh, on uh working on interior pages so it's a little nice. behind the scenes stuff yeah so i gotta ink these pages <laughs> and what is, is is this uh what is this book is this the is this the cannibal kitty that's happening right now yeah this is cannibal kitty three um it's uh so she just nigel goes to school and she decides you know i'm just gonna i'm gonna go to school too so you know because she's bored bored as as cats get and stuff so uh she she makes her ears disappear and all that and then she just uh she just shows up at school and and takes him to go ditch is like his first ditch day and and do just be a bad cat so uh, <laughs> be a bad cat <laughs> yeah so mischief just getting into mischief all day long i like it. it i like it that makes yeah. sense that makes it's sense awesome. it's just, the story is so just it's just so fun and and you know you just you can just read it and not you know and just escape from the trials of real life and stuff and that's that's all the books I always ever made. You know, it's like it, it shouldn't you shouldn't have to be all political about shit or nothing. Just make a cool fucking book that's fun. You know, fun. Is Nightmare helping you with the storylines? Oh yeah, she writes. She writes the whole thing. I don't. I don't do nothing. Nice. Yeah. So she just gives it to me, and I'm just like, what's cool about that is that I go because she's like, I was like, I go find someone to draw it, and she's like, I really can't find nobody. I, I don't. You know, I mean, she's like, I really want you to draw it and stuff, and I'm just like, oh. so I'm like, okay. Uh, when there's fight scenes or kill scenes and stuff, I go just leave me just leave me space for empty pages and let me do the kill scenes myself. You know, let me, <laughs> let me just invent what I want to do. And she's like, cool. So when she gives me a script, there'll be a, there'll be gaps. So she'll be like, you know, do a kill here, do a kill here. Eight, nine and ten, just kill somebody. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, because that's one of my things is, um, you know. Well, yeah, killing people. Oh yeah, but you know, just leaving uh publishing companies and bullshit I, I just i just i'm just really not good at being told what to do so i, I can really yeah. yeah i think i think a lot of us in in our in our same little <laughs> time era are about the same thing we can yeah. work with certain people with no problem but when somebody new comes around and they start barking orders you're like um 
<laughs> right? I don't want. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just not. It's not my thing, man. Well, and and since you've announced it, we can talk about it too. Sure. And uh, uh, Russ is is asking um, those that somehow don't know. Uh, yeah, Dan is also the creator of uh, Zombie Tramp. Uh, which has been over at Action Lab for a long time, but Dan has recently gotten uh, the rights to Zombie Tramp back. Congratulations, nice. congratulations! Uh, Thank you. And uh, I, I heard rumblings of a uh, uh, something this fall that you're going to be doing with uh, with Zombie Tramp. Yeah, uh, October will be um, there'll be a Zombie Tramp Kickstarter in October, um, probably to right, right towards the end of October. Um, and it's it's gonna be a, a brand new story written and drawn by me. I haven't I haven't I walked away from Zombie Tramp almost three years ago, so this will be the first time doing something with Zombie Tramp in three years. And um, we're we're not only gonna make the Kickstarter uh, just about a new book. We're gonna we're gonna try to give the fans ev almost every piece of merchandise they've ever wanted but never was made. So yeah. Hmm. <laughs> what 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 is the uh, what is the quick checklist of that? Uh, two different shirts, a zip-up hoodie, um, uh, bo uh, body pillowcases. You know, where it's all, it's all sexy and you hug them and shit and you know, <laughs> like that. You know, um, you know, lots of free stuff we give out. You know, like you know, enamel pins and patches and and uh, you know anything we think of uh, stripper pins and you know just all that all the stuff that you see in my Kickstarter's now were all things that I've always wanted publishers to make i'm like we should get we should have these we should have this and nothing ever got made all that ever got made was more covers so um so yeah i just uh so it was so easy once i started self-publishing i was like these are the things i always wanted made and i just went and made them there was it wasn't hard at all so i just i just i have this list in my head of anything i could think of man but yeah Bunch of cool I remember stuff. you talking about the pillows like years ago. Remember those body? I was like, I want to make some body pillows, yeah. this man. But then look, I have made four already. Yeah, so this will be the last one, the fifth, the fifth. So. I wouldn't say last. You never know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> the last one for a while. Yeah, I got yeah. them all behind me over over here. <laughs> it's all all famous last words. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, like uh, the enamel pins. I was like, okay, that's the last enamel pin I'm doing because I'm making them too big and they're breaking, and because I'm making them like four inches tall. And um, but now I'm just like, oh, gotta do more enamel pins because Zombie Tramp's coming. So, but because I was switching to keychains. So, oh, yeah, I'm it's excited. definitely cool to do things uh, across your brand. It's like when we did poker chips, we were, did them originally yeah. for Pretty for Your Soul because it made sense. It's a Las Vegas thing. Yeah. But people yep. liked them, and they were like, "Yo, are you gonna do them for like Oz and Shahrazad?" I was like, "Uh, okay." And oh and so it became a collection, even though it's like a weird sort of, you know, non-genre specific thing. Uh, people just dig them. So yeah, no, that makes total sense to yeah, I did that for all your stuff. Yeah, the um, there's this, there's just like so many ideas. Where I was like, "Why can't I just make this?" And then it's just just once you make it, it's cool. Another thing is um. Probably not for this campaign, but when Zombie Tramp after this campaign, Zombie Tramp will come back uh, to Kickstarter in June, um, and then eventually, uh, what I'll start and that'll be like because this one is kind of this story is for this October will be kind of like uh, what's happened since my last issue in Fifty Six. What happened since then, and it leaves it it ends it ends everything that basically happened in. Um, you know, at Action Lab, and and starts starts it up for a new a whole new uh, arc. Um, so then, starting in June, um, we start a whole new arc. And and what it, what I want to do eventually, because um, uh, Sugar Pop is on his last book next year because it's only a four parter. Uh, uh, Animal Kitty is only supposed to be six issues, so that'll be ending eventually. Um, and so it's kind of like I I want to start. It'll gradually start happening. Where there'll be three. About three uh, Zombie Tramp uh, campaigns a year, and then at the end of every year, I put it together in a trade and then send it to Diamond. So the trades will be in the stores, but not the singles. The singles will only be in Kickstarter. That's a good idea. Yeah. 
So, so but he, he, yeah. even you're talking about mini series for for uh, like sugar pop and stuff. But what? You, you were talking about sh- mini series for sugar pop and having endings, but they're not endings. Endings. They're just no. that arc is ending. Yeah, it's because it, the sugar pop is just an origin story. Like where where did it come from? So that's this is just it's just a four part origin story. So that's that's coming to its end. But sugar pop. You know, there won't be no more Sugar Pop books, but Sugar Pop's always in Sad Girl books, so you'll still see her, but she just doesn't have her own series. You know, it's done. Uh, even though she, uh, she makes most of the money. <laughs> we don't, don't want to rethink that. <laughs> yeah, man. What's up with that? Why'd you choose to do that? Um, I, just, I, I didn't plan on... I actually... I explained it to one of... It was sad because one of, one of my fans, his favorite character is Sugar Pop. And I was explaining to him, I'm like, I don't, um, I don't really know. Like when you when you start writing characters and stuff, you start to get to know them. And I just can't. I just for some reason it's hard to write Sugar Pop. I don't know her. I just, I just. Can't. Oh, that's interesting. I just don't know her at all. Like I know, I know, I know Janie Bell really easily. You know, as soon as as soon as I got the rights back, I wrote the script that night. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, uh, and Sad Girl, I. I just know her like it's it's just I don't know you can you can start hearing them in, in the back of your head so you, it's really comfortable and easy to write you know even even though I don't I don't write Cannibal Kitty I, I know her too like when when I'm reading the script I'm like oh yeah of course that's that's how she would be you know what I mean I kind of just I'm it's more comfortable but Sugar Pop I just don't know her <laughs> she's a stranger that's really interesting she's even there's even characters I've drawn plenty of times, even before I, I went pro, where I've never written them, but I've drawn them so many times. It's like you said, you start to get to know them as a person, yeah. Yeah. almost. So it's really interesting that you spent that much time with her and never really got yeah. to grasp. Yeah, it's, it's... I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to kick this bitch to the curb. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's so funny how it all came about, because I'm just like... I made, um, I made uh, Sad Girl because... Um, I just needed to make more money, dude. Like I wasn't making a lot of money working for a publisher, so I just, I just, um, I don't know. Gotta go. It was just uh, so I, I made, I made Sad Girl, and then that was it. After I made Sad Girl, um, it, you know, it did, it did pretty well. So I was just like, okay, I'm gonna make another one. And then after that, I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna make my own books and not deal with people no more. So. Create your own universe. Yeah. <laughs> So you haven't had any of these. Uh, is is the plan that you have for uh, uh, Zombie Tramp with the trades and stuff? Is that the plan huh? you're going to do with all these other books as well? You're going to drop trades uh, through Diamond? Yeah, I'll drop trades when they're done. Like like you know like Sugar Pop uh, when it's done. Um, you know I'll, I'll throw that in. But it's like I can't. I really can't. Since I finished Sugar Pop, I really can't send it to Diamond until. I get trades done a sad girl because the order that it comes it's it's, it's sad girl and uh, and uh, the origin of sugar pop doesn't kick in until sad after sad girl too because there's reference when you're reading sad girl it'll say you know it has that reference you know like read you know sugar pop number one for this background and all this stuff you know so I I, I gotta kind of wait on that so because sad girl is like. I could finish Sad Girl's arc in probably four to five more issues, and then that would be either a gigantic omnibus or just a couple couple volumes. Because almost every issue of Sad Girl I do is almost forty pages. So, oh, that is Ooh. big, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> I'm always like, man, I gotta calm down. These, these are, this is way too many pages. You know, I'm always, I go into it. I'm just like, hey, it's only gonna be this many pages, and then I'm writing the script. I'm like, I'm not gonna make it. It's going to be another big one. Well, that's one of the advantages to being the boss is you decide. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. I'm putting 10 more pages in. We're just doing it. That was a big thing with like working for a publisher. It had to be t- like 22 pages. Like it had to be. And I'm just like, I'm not going to make it, dude. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, you know, you got to make some cuts. You got to cut some scenes and stuff like that. And I'm just like, I'm just like, come on, dude. Just let me make it 30 pages. <laughs> it'll yeah. be all right, I swear. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah, I, I know that pain. I've, I've been there, and I just decided 
Okay, we're just going to throw we're just going to throw five more pages in. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's not like the. I mean, here's the thing: if you if you uh, if you if you have this kind of standard twenty twenty two page book, and then all of a sudden you're just like, oh, fans, here's like twenty eight pages. They're not going to be like what? They're going to be like, oh, cool, I got more pages. Yeah, yeah. that was a thing. Also, it's like if you know since. You know these Kickstarters, you only get like one issue a year if you got multiple right. characters and stuff. So you you know give them a thicker book, you know, like so it's just a yeah. little bit more content. That's like with us for for Oz this year, we we wanted to do the entire arc, but we really only had space to do three campaigns. And normally our arcs are basically like five issues. So I was like, well, we'll do the first issue at twenty pages, like we normally do, and then the other two will be forty, and we'll have the whole arc done. And that's yeah, super easy done. Yeah. I forgot to draw clothes on my character, so now I have, I have to improvise. Uh, <laughs> I always do that. Yeah, everything I draw is always naked first, and then I put the clothes on last. Yeah, but I started inking, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out too well. Nope. So now we're just well, and, it up and there's definitely on. there's definitely never any nudity in the still ill universe, right? No, no never, never, right? man. That's an offensive. <laughs> <laughs> so, a naked body. Oh my goodness! Uh, Gross. Gross. <laughs> Ew, icky. Icky. <laughs> the one thing looking forward to call love. Why do you do that? Yeah. As still ill princess, we love offending people at shows. This is our. It's our shtick. <laughs> you know, we've seen. Um, we always have this. We have a little hum song that me and Nightmare do whenever we see um, a certain person get offended. We uh, we have this little hum like like that, that we know we notice somebody get offended. So it's like a little private kind of song we do, like so we don't have to be all loud about it. But yeah, it's funny, man. But yeah, we've seen uh, we've made people cry, all kinds of stuff. What? Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, it made people cry, and we, but no, I don't. We don't say nothing. It's just the artwork makes people cry, and I'm just like, what the hell, dude? Wow, that's it's so moving. No, it's not even. I, that. I, I never, <laughs> no, I know it's not. Never. Yeah, it's like, oh, my my boyfriend wants to take a picture with our banner. Oh, it's so uh, no. Why do you have to do this? And she starts crying and running away. Uh, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, dude, if, if it was a picture of a fucking Betty or Wilma, and you want to take a picture with it, would you still be upset? You know, it's the same mm -hmm. shit. It's just a bunch of lines. It's a bunch of non-existent lines. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, never, that's that's a new one, man. I've yeah, never heard crazy. that. Um, yeah, we've I've I've seen so many so many things. Like I, I I've had people I've I've had people cry in the reverse way. You know, meaning like like I never knew like like writing Zombie Tramp. I never knew. I was just trying to make like you know like abrasive like kind of you know grindhousey kind of stories. I, I never I never knew that people could relate to her. Um, and then I started running, I started meeting like women and stuff that would come to me crying because like these, these tragic things that happened to this character happened to them, man. And I'm like, Oh shit. So I, Damn. it was, uh, it's kind of weird. I didn't think about it, <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. So That's then when I see, people, mind, yeah. Yeah. so when I see people get mad and get offended about it, I'm just like, well, you know, you don't have that kind of life, so you're lucky. You know? it's crazy. You don't know my life. Yeah, you don't know my life. Yeah. I don't even pay attention anymore to that stuff. Yeah. It's even better when, especially with you, with Nightmare, it's better to me when Shannon's with me because somebody gets an attitude. Yep. And Shannon's like, I created this character. What? Yeah. That's I exactly job I did, bitch. Yeah, that's... that's that's the greatest thing about having nightmare with me because people can't really get too offended. Like I'm like I'm like, see this this character, uh, a female made this character, and then there's nothing they can say after that. <clears throat> well, then then it's suddenly empowering, right? Oh well, yeah. if she did it, then it's that's different. The yeah, funniest thing shit. every time I hear you guys talk about that, it's such a weird <laughs> double standard, and I would. Be yeah so vocal about it and it yeah. sucks because of course i've got a vagina and i can get away with a lot more than so you, 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 have you have a vagina i do i don't know oh my 
I've seen your art, April. You can't have a vagina. You draw that. Have you? Have you ever run into that? Have you run into that at shows, April, with your art? I have ran into girls that have like talked to me about my art, and I'm like, yeah, but you see more the more that you look at it, and by the time that I get done talking about it, they're buying a piece. So it's like I've converted them or something. Yeah, that's cool. I've had a girl explain to me why why I was. She's like, your art style is so pretty. I like it so much. But she had explained to me what I was doing wrong and how I was offending women. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what are you talking? I'm like, what are you talking about? What am I doing wrong? You know? And she's like, well, like, look at this character. This character's name is Psycho Baby. You're trying to say that women are psychos, and you know, and this one is Zombie Tramp. You're trying to say that women are tramps. I'm like, no, these are just names, lady. Like, yeah, you're reading a little too much into it. I'm like, I'm like, have, I'm like, well, you know, they're younger. There's people saying this stuff, so I'm like, you don't know, you don't know '70s exploitation films. You don't know that kind of genre. That's and that's the stuff that I, I like. That's the stuff I, I portray. So I, I just tell her, it's like, you know, it's just, it's just the genre I chose. You know, it's 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 exploitation genre stuff. You know, and and I try not to get mad or even over-explain myself because I'm just like, whatever. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's not okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't pay attention. That's like, what did that guy say to you last weekend, Mike? Hmm. One at, the one at Planet. Something about being popular because you, <laughs> the way you draw. Oh, did he say something? I don't remember that. <laughs> you like, I already forgot about it. I got fucking wasted on what Friday nights. So Friday like everything night, yeah. after that is a bit of a blur. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember one guy coming by, and he didn't stop at my table. It was him and another guy, and they kind of uh, breezed through casually. And as they were walking away, he said something along those lines. I think. Yeah, I think that's the guy. I was, I was Maybe that's the guy. <laughs> I was like, "Well, fuck you to two, you sir. Yeah, to you too, sir." Funny <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Was one time in New York, uh, we were just sitting at a, at a table. Me and Bill McKay were sitting, I think, at an Action Lab table. And the guy walks by and he just he's, sees all the stuff we got on the table. And he goes, this is offensive to women. And right away, Bill's like, fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like, beat it, you know. And it's like, <laughs> and we're like, I was like, you're offensive to women. He's like, what? I'm like, you're offensive to women. Uh, I can see that on McKay, too. I'm just like, don't you don't you feel that you're offensive to women to to judge and and just and to actually say what women like, you know? It's like this. right to make up their opinion for them. Yeah, you're you're offending you're offending women across the world. Yeah, I I had one of those. I had one one con where I had the fuck off moment, and I just told the guy to fuck off. I just oh, yeah. he would not listen to anything I had to say. All he wanted to all he wanted to talk about was his little agenda. Uh, yeah, and I was like, look, people. dude, I'm, I'm literally talking to you about a brand of comics. All you want to do is look at Penny for your soul. That's all you want to look at. I'm showing you Critter. I'm showing you Scheherazade. I'm showing you all this other stuff. All you want to see is how terrible, uh, Penny for your soul is. So fuck off. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's funny, man. I, I get, I get some really cool fans that are just, um, you know, they do. They start. They just know all this stuff. They're like giving me trivia questions, like while they're talking to me. They're just like, "Oh, you know the part where this happened? What does this feel like?" I'm like, "What the fuck is going on? Like, how do you know this much stuff? I don't even remember all this stuff." Well, and what was crazy is at the same show, I also had somebody come up, and she, so she comes up, she picks up the Shahrazad book, and she's like, "Oh, this looks really cool." She says, uh, "Can I? Do I get a free copy if if my name is Shahrazad?" And I was like, uh, "Of course." And so she pulls out her ID and damned if her name wasn't legitimately Scheherazade. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Funny, man. That's like the original yeah. old, you know, S-C-H-E-R, like the real Scheherazade spelling. I was like, oh, my God, that's fantastic. So That is so uh, funny. So, yeah. So that's that's the dichotomy of cons. I mean, you, you're going to get people that are excited about it, and you're going to get people that are going to be like, oh, I don't like it. Well, then you don't have to look at it. I mean, <laughs> oh, no, like this. <laughs> go to the next table and look at what's there. Yeah. And most people are excited about it. I mean, you can't lie about that, right? Most of the time, yes. Yeah. I usually do that. It's okay for you not to like it. And it's okay. What you do is you decide what it is that you like or don't like. 
and it's and great to talk about art and it's such a I don't know, it's such an art student thing to do, but the more they, they identify what they like or don't like, I usually find something that they can identify with. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm back. And then as soon as they leave, I'm all like, fuck those people. Yeah. <laughs> I want to sit next to you at a show, April. <laughs> no, you really don't. Yeah, it's I do. That would be so much fun. We have, we have a blast. so loud. <laughs> That's okay. It's all right. I'm used to it. That's the, news, it'll be fantastic. that's the definition of art is just to evoke an emotion out of some but yeah out of somebody out of that's something that you created that didn't exist before you know what i mean it's like so if someone likes it or gets mad it doesn't matter like hell yeah i just made some art yeah. <laughs> every time someone gets mad i'm like art awesome very yeah you took the words right out of my mouth i mean yeah. seriously i've always said ever since i was in high school like if your art's not pissing someone off you're not doing something right Oh, oh yeah. then we're all doing something right. Yeah. Even Stan Lee said that shit, you know. He's he's like when I created Spider Man, they were just like, No, people hate spiders, why would you want this? And you know, he's like <laughs> mm -hmm. he's like, This is gonna be a hit because people are giving me shit about it, so and then he told Ditko to finish everything else and do it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, here's the rest of Stan Lee's story. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's gonna be awesome. Ditko, do all the work. There's Stan story, and then there's most of the time reality. <laughs> so I know you're going to be at uh, uh, Monroe in a couple of uh, three about three weeks. Three you're weeks. Going to be there. I am going to be there. Yes. Oh yeah, dude. That's cool. That's uh, I fuck. How far is Monroe from? Me? I think it's almost an hour. I'm not from I'm not from you. It's probably it's probably be, probably maybe ninety minutes. It's not super far. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Not I'll gonna be super far. Yeah. It's not gonna be super far. Yeah. I, I'm just gonna go to and fro. You know, just drive home afterwards. Oh yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna stay at no hotel or nothing. Well, the first night is kind of like a preview night, and then it's yeah. and then it's just Saturday. So it's a pretty easy show. Pretty easy show. Yeah. Although this is the first time they've done the preview night. Uh, and that's just because yep. of COVID, so they can help people have a little more time, uh, you know, more space and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but it's uh, I've done it a couple of times, and it's a it's a cool little cool little show. Yeah, that was that was like the thing. Like the the guy um, I can't remember his name. Uh, the guy that does the show, um, he was he wanted me for the show. Then COVID happened, you know, and it was just like over a year went by, and he's you know, I was like he's like, can you do the show still? Like, yeah, and then. And then uh, Fan Expo Dallas offered me a table, and I'm just like, oh, but I promised this guy, so I, I got to keep my word. Oh, oh that's, that's very good yeah. of you. I'm not going to screw him over. You're a better man than Ryan. I made sure I told him. I'm like, hey, I'm skipping Dallas because of this. <laughs> and he's like, hell yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's the show I want to do. I've always wanted to do Dallas Fan Expo, and I never have because it was always the same weekend as uh, Texas Frightmare, and I, yeah. horror show I always do. Um, so, but yeah, I, I wasn't gonna do a Texas Frightmare no more because they kept doing the same same weekend. But now I think they're gonna be on separate weekends. I think people made that clear that they were pissed off about it enough every year. Yeah. It was cool though, because like, um, like Bill. Bill would be doing um, Fan Expo, and then um, and then we would be doing Frightmare, like me and Sean Gabbard and Dave Duan, whatever. So they would, we would meet somewhere for barbecue. You know what I mean? We just jump. <laughs> Bill would meet up with us, with us and stuff, and you know it's still cool. But, yeah. Oh, X marks the spot, huh, Mark? Mike? Mark? Yeah, man. Give, give it some uh, pasties. Yeah, my name's Mark now. Actually, I changed uh -huh. it over the weekend. <laughs> This guy came over to because I I wanted to I want to buy a new garage door and and he kept calling me Dave the whole time <laughs> <laughs> and he's like okay Dave I'll talk to you later Dave all right Dave and I'm just like I'm not gonna correct him well next when he shows up next week you gotta be like dude my name is Pete <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then like he's sending me he's emailing me an estimate 
Like he calls and leaves a message. He's like, hey, you got can you text me your email? I want to send you an estimate. He's like, talk to you later, Dave. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I should have gave him some guy named Dave's fucking email. Sure, we know a few of those who could have done it. Yeah, I guess you gave him Dave Dwanch's email. <laughs> So uh, Terry's asking here if the, the sketches yeah. are for sale tonight. Generally, they are, uh, Terry. All you got to do is, um, you know, contact the artists and uh, see what they're doing with them. But I know uh, I know April basically puts a price on hers before the show's even over. Yeah, quick like that. Quick like a bunny. Smaller. Man, you're using those drafting pencils, I'm like. Yeah, I've been switching it up a, a lot lately, though. I've been using mechanical yeah. pencils more. Really? Yeah, I used to use the drafting pencil, and then I had the little sharpener and the little blue. Mm -hmm. You spin it around, and it's so fucking fun. That's and it, yeah. And I was just like, always had like a mechanical pencil on me, so I just said, fuck it, I'm just going to use a mechanical right. pencil. Right. Yeah, me too. It's always, it's always been there. Yeah, because with the drafting pencil, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to start with a 6H, and then I'm going to go. Oh, jeez, man. I'm going oh, to I'm gonna get a 4B after that, and you know. <laughs> It's like, it's like print. It's like drawing with oil. It's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. No, I steal all mine. So. You steal, you steal your steal your supplies and your materials. I do. No, I steal my pencils and. Yeah. From like Staples, like what? Well, well, from the ER. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you like. I thought you were a kleptomaniac. That was. No. Well, I mean, it kind of sucks. But I, I've, you know, you walk out on um, shift, you know, with like ten of them in your hair, and you just yeah, make it. Yeah. What do you do? But put them in a drawer, and then you're like, "Yep, now I've got time to use them." So when I, I used to work them. my day job, I used I used to abuse the shit out of my day job. The office, I'd use your UPS machine to ship original art. I'd be stealing supplies out of supply closet, post its, and lead, and yeah. all kinds of shit. Allegedly. Like they were. Right, uh, allegedly. <laughs> I'm not saying which job this was. <laughs> just saying some of the jobs I had. But yeah, they they paid their UPS paid for so much original oh, art. Warriors watching right now, going, "Damn it, I freaking knew it." <laughs> Get him! We got him. Guys are gonna bust down my door. <laughs> no, I used to have just take home bar rags and pens. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Ryan. Yo, remember the Bubble O Seven? The Buffalo Seven? No, the Bubble O Seven. Is, is the drink you made for cops? Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. Bubble O Seven. What? What's that? <laughs> I remember doing it. I don't remember what we what it was. It was uh, it was Monster Energy Drink, and then it was Bubble Vod Bubble. Uh, oh yeah, Bubble, 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 bubble Vodka. Vodka, the Three Olives. Yep, Bubble O Seven. Yep. Yes, it was a three dollars bubblegum vodka mixed with Monster. Yeah, that I was, was drinking uh, that all the time. You. Fucking, that's, <laughs> like, there's that reaching point right there. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that shit was delicious. That's, that's way back when. Now we just kind of stick with whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I just I'm just a Jack and Coke. Make it simple. Jack and Coke. Took it up. Yep. Good man. I didn't even drink whiskey till I met Nightmare. I was a uh, I was a rum and coke guy, and then and then I started drinking whiskey after that. I bought yeah, we had some good ass whiskey at Ryan's water. house last week. I don't remember. No, we were oh whatever you were drinking. Oh, me and, Shannon. Yeah, me and Shannon had uh, a shot. Whatever your his uh, Daryl's neighbor brought. I took a picture of it. It was pretty good. Oh yeah, Dave. Oh the bottle, Dave. Yeah. Speaking of Shannon, and she appears. Yeah. Somebody said whiskey. Somebody said whiskey. <laughs> Somebody said whiskey. <laughs> Shannon's here. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I guess it kind of happens frequently when that when that word is that I pop up. But I'm drinking red wine tonight. What kind? Cabernet. That's my favorite. You're you're like my drinking spirit animal. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I love we're having a conversation, song. Mike. Huh? So we're gonna have a little conversation <laughs> here, Mike. <laughs> well, Shannon likes all the things we like. This is true. Who's we? 
Me and Ryan. Ryan doesn't drink red wine. I don't drink red wine. Oh, he doesn't. He oh, well, I, in general, yeah, Ryan's always Ryan's always been my Jack Daniels brother in crime. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm a full blown whiskey girl and red wine girl. Yeah, I love Cabernet Sauvignon. They're so good. And real yeah, beer. Dan, Dan just chuckles. <laughs> did you see that? Sis, did you see that sissy ass drink that I was drinking yesterday? It was so delicious. I drank I drank like two or three of them. It's uh, it's like a martini, and they drop a shit ton of gummy gummy bears inside. Is so that all the, the one you posted. Yeah, and so then after that, it's like, it's like, um, yeah. Once you're done drinking it, man, all the all the gummy bears are just infused with vodka, dude. It's awesome. Fantastic. See, that's what we have to do is we just have to take Dan to the bar, and he can try all the crazy fruity girly drinks, and we just <laughs> <take> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, which one tastes so delicious and fruity? Yeah, <laughs> it was funny. I'm not ordering it, but we can order it for Dan. We're good. <laughs> because over, you know, in Michigan, in the area we live in, you know, it's like you know a bunch of rugged, rugged little guys and stuff. Um, and then I go to the bar while I'm waiting for our table, and I'm like, and I, I'm like, give me two of those gummy bear drinks, and I'm, and I'm sitting there waiting for our table, and, and I just got this martini kind of glass, and I got my pinky out drinking that shit. <laughs> like, let's see, let's see if it makes anybody look at me funny. I don't well, know yeah, about you, but I didn't see it. Dave anyway, so it works out. I see a cover happening with that. Pinky's out. Yeah. If it's a fancy drink, I got to put my pinky out, man. Yeah. <laughs> Was it a fancy drink because of the gummy bears or because of the margarita glass? Uh, the martini, the martini glass, made <laughs> or the martini glass, yeah, yeah, and it was like all, and the drink was all pink, you know, and stuff, and it was awesome. Jeez, Dan, yeah. <laughs> you're wearing all black, drinking a pink martini. You're picking yeah, up. I was wearing all black. It's so funny because I just like, um, I wear I wear hoodies every day. Like it's 90 degrees out yesterday, and I'm like wearing a hoodie, drinking a martini. <laughs> It's like the Dan Mendoza's I, I the Bill Belichick of comic books. So when when is the last uh, of the other ones you were saying, Dan? Of like Sugar Pop, the last Sugar Pop is issue four. That's going to be uh, probably March next year. Next year. So I got time to do a cover. Yes. <laughs> when you send it to me, like I, I do, like I do for everybody, um, when it comes to Sugar Pop covers, I send it back and I and I draw over it. I'm like, the boobs have to be like 10 times. <laughs> I'm like, these boobs are like three cup sizes too small. Go back. All right. <laughs> It's just, somebody uh, else tells me they have to go bigger. I'm okay with that. When I do it myself, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, damn, it just yeah. looks like the earth. There's a, an artist that refused to do it. Um, um, I had a, a store, a store getting a Sugar Pop exclusive, and they picked this artist, and um, and it looked awesome, but the the boobs were like four sizes too small. And um, and I was like, no, you got to send it back, dude. And then they're like, and they're like, well, he won't make them any bigger. And I and I go tell him that Superman's cape isn't blue, and then and then um, he 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 messaged me. He's like, I respect you and I respect your fans, but I don't I don't I'm not gonna do that. So I was like, well, I, I'm not gonna use it then. And then um, and he, it's kind of fucked up because he still took the the comic book store's money for the drawing. Oh no! Yeah. Uh, hmm. uh, so. Well, he did do the work, but that's still sucks. Yeah, I'm torn on that. Yeah, he did the work. Still, you're like, paying you're so much paying. time, first and foremost. Yeah, you're paying for. But he he went into it with the model sheets. You know what I mean? I'm like, this is what the book yeah. is. You know, so it's kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I always, know I always do that. Work. Yeah, I used to always do that, like with with Zombie Tramp and stuff, and and uh, having to prove artists and stuff, and and having to fight with Action Lab about. Uh, well, not just actually, just uh, let's say Jason Martin having a fight with Jason Martin uh, because he's like the editor of, of everything, and he's like, and I was like, dude, I, I go send that back. And he's like, why do you keep sending it back? And I always, I always do the same thing. I go tell him Superman's cape isn't blue every fucking time, man. It's just uh, it's such a headache. <laughs> oh, 
I mean, I wouldn't feel bad. I've I've seen Polito do the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. does he still hand out your character sheet? Because he, he gave me like a. Oh, good. He's, Polito said once, he's like, "Hey, for uh, the cover you're doing, make the boobs not as squishy as you usually do." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, no problem, man. I'm glad you told me up front. You know, it's awesome." <laughs> You need, to you, want him to, you need to be large and round. You wanted him to yep. be stiffer, you know. So I was just okay. Hey, man, that's the that's the style you want. That's what you're gonna get. It's hard, it's easier work for me actually. So. Does he still hand out that pamphlet of a character sheet? It was like um, ten pages deep. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. That Isn't is that crazy? Thing. Like it, it goes into detail. About Lady That's Dev. one of the things. I never got that uh, for Lady Dev, but I got that for Dawn. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, like uh, Dynamite had a uh, sketch card set that came out, and he was handpicking artists, and it was, um, you know, like two pages long uh, stuff that, you know, like like the, the lace had to have like skulls in it, and the Oh yeah. Different accessories yeah. that she had, and that her eyes had to be, you know, a certain way, and blah blah blah. So I love that's, that kind of stuff, and the Lady Death uh, one is the best. I never come along. That's um, I did a, a Lady Mechanica cover, and uh, and that that's how it was. Um, um, yeah, he kept, he, yeah, he kept sending it back. He was like, "Hey, homeboy," because I need it like this. I need it like this. every time. And hey, homeboy, I need. And so I, I have to. I had to redo like the three times, but it was cool. I didn't. I didn't mind because I'm like I. I want. I'm the one that asked for it. I go. I want a lady just a lady uh, mechanical cover, you know. And so that's yep. what I got. It was, so yeah, it's fun. So I, I. I tried to give when I have people do stuff. I don't because that's what I see with lots of the comic book stuff. They just send you lots. They'll send you pages or they'll send yeah. you some covers and stuff like that. Like, like people need to get back to doing model sheets, man. Like, absolutely. Just like yeah. the animation industry. When you do the animation industry, they, you want, you're going to give the animator a model sheet. So it has to stay on model. You know what I mean? So I always try to do that. At least give people a front view, you know, of, of from, you know, head to toe, just standing there. there. You know, so you know the outfits, you know the skin color. I even have the color swatches on all these things. You know, so great. It, it's just, I just, I, I'm since I went to animation school and stuff like that. I'm kind of like getting back into all that animation stuff, and I'm just like, I got it. You gotta have model sheets, man. Damn it, Dan, you're gonna make it me do work. Yeah, it, it helps <laughs> out a ton, especially when it's a new character or you're just unfamiliar with the character overall. Having something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, it does make a difference. Hint, hint, Ryan. Yeah. I already I'm did that. that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just giving, I'm just giving you shit. Chill out. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I did it for the main characters. I got to do it for all of them, though. I do send that stuff sometimes. Where if I like, if I if I had an artist do a cover for me, and I really liked something like something that they did as a take on the character. That's really mm -hmm. nice, you know. I'll use that as reference because I'm like, I like that, and then I'll start using that too. Like, I liked how yeah. they did that. I'm gonna do that for now on, also. You know what I mean? So the characters, cool. when different artists work on your characters, the character starts evolving into things because you start seeing other other people's viewpoints on it, and it, and it's just really interesting. And you start doing that yourself, you know. It's just nice. Yeah, artistic interpretation is is something that yeah. you kind of got to allow for generally. Not all the time. I mean, sometimes yeah. you, it needs to be, I need, this character is existing in this context, so she has to look this way. But when uh, when you can just kind of let the, 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 the artist be like, yo, just kind of do your magic, Go with uh, it. oftentimes that's what yeah. you get. Yeah, like like a Kendrick Lim. Kendrick Lim's actually really cool as, as, as far as following directions and stuff. Um, but like he'll, I, I just kind of like he'll ask for the theme. He always asks for a theme. So as long as I give him a theme and a couple of references, then I just let him do his thing, you know. But he'll always be like, "What do you think about this? What do you think?" I'm like, "No, it's, you're fine, dude. Just, just, just finish it, dude." So, but yeah, like he's so booked up with time that I'm just kind of like, if I can get a Kendrick Lim, I'll just be happy. Yeah. What's going on, Terry? Welcome. Glad you found us tonight. I yep, just we're shared looking at 
feed on you my just, Facebook. Just yeah. shared it out? Awesome. Cool. I shared yeah, it out. Yeah. Have a look at Marissa's piece here. Marissa, you've been awful quiet. I was or, or... <laughs> <laughs> we gotta We got to make sure everybody gets some equal time here. Yeah, squeak, that's squeak, cute. Squeak, like... squeak, 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 squeak. I like <laughs> the... Equal. Yeah, the face and the the more uh, cartoony body is really nice. On on mine. Yeah, that's what I'm talking to. Oh, oh well, thank you. <laughs> you're, the, you're the one that's on. Uh, that's the most well, yeah, he's he, he's watching you do your thing. Yeah. Well, cool. like, he can see me. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I'm hot. I'm sweaty. <laughs> like. Um, that in, in Grandma's Boy, you know, when he's against the wall with his trench coat, and he's like, "How did they see me?" Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I love that movie. That was just on the other night. Uh huh. I put it on. So right in here, since it's the '90s, I got this kid in this classroom. That's uh, he's got that kid in play high top fade. Um, oh hell yeah! yeah. Nice. 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 Hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving everybody that giant hairspray hair with the terrible separated bangs and uh, thing again. all that shit. I, I graduated high school in 1992, so I know what it's about. <laughs> it's a thing again. The 90s are back. It's terrible. Yeah, Shannon has hair like that right now. <laughs> I do not. Go fuck yourself. We always, say, <laughs> we always say that's how Michigan is. We're like, fucking, it's 1990 over here, man. It seems strange. Dude. It's hella 1990 in Michigan. Well, you're saying hella too. Yeah, yeah I say I've been saying it. hella. People that say hella are from Northern California. So yeah, I was about to say that's a NorCal yeah. thing. Yeah, I was. I lived in Sacramento until I was 14. So, so that's You've been saying hella for as long as I've known you. Yeah. Yeah, I hella for been saying hella. <laughs> Oh, there's some really big boobs there. Well, you know, Dan draws big boobs. I know. <laughs> That's the character <laughs> sheet. Everybody got the character sheet. Triple, I know, I know. Big old boobs. Big old boobies. Take old baby. Pull it up. I'll pull it up. Let's see. I think you're I so offensive to Ryan. Yeah. I already know. He's the point of the character sheet. I'm like, I know. Dan, I've been around for a little while. I know. Oh. Uh, so this is, so for my model sheets, I'd usually just, I, I put a little bio thing, you know, like, just like the old Marvel Universe books that used to come out, you know, oh, where yeah. you get the height and all that stuff. But, um, but yeah, I put, I put like, uh, you know, like their boob size and all that bullshit. But yeah, it's just a bunch what of fun. What would you call her boob size? Uh, this is a 34 triple D. I think it's bigger than that. Yeah, it looks bigger than that. That's because her rib cage is really small. She's short. Okay. Yeah, and her head is gigantic. Her head is gigantic. Yeah, yeah she's only five one. Yeah. <laughs> short and stacked. Yeah, it's funny. Like everything, whenever I make the height of a character, it's always comparable to Zombie Trump. Zombie Trump is five five. So everything is like, okay, well, is it taller or sh or shorter than Zombie Trump? You know, it's, it's crazy. Hey, Dan says Terry, what's up, man? Oh, you want to see the new? Might as well. I'll show you the new um, Zombie Trump uh, model sheet thing. Oh so. snap! It's an exclusive. I'm so excited, <laughs> Dan. Uh, books. All right, top secret stuff, man. <laughs> There you go. It's just it's the, it's the whole zombie trap model sheet. Nice. Yeah, nice and simple. Just take but yeah, see five five. All this bullshit. So. The old school zombie tramp. Yeah. Hey, look at it. bra size the same, thirty four triple D. I think you have a type. Them small yeah, weights. We got a, um, what is it? Uh, what are the model sheets? There's this. 
the sugar pop one's so old that model sheet, but whatever. It's uh yeah, see thirty six G. There you go. That's more like it. <laughs> yeah, but how somehow she's only 115 pounds. I don't know how that works, but whatever. 80 pounds of her is tits. Like, well, yeah. unicorn unicorn breasts don't weigh that as much as regular breasts, apparently. Yes, it's, it's the unicorn of, magic. It's full of cotton candy, right? Yes. That was the whole thing with the design of Sugar Pop was um, I wanted her to be the colors of cream soda. So that's her skin's dark and, and her hair is like fluffy like the foam when you pour a soda, you know? <laughs> that's cool, man. That's awesome. Yeah, that was like the whole thing of her. I'm never going to look at cream soda the same. Oh, I love me some cream soda, man. It's my favorite, but I'm never going to look at it the same. It's like boob, unicorn yeah. boobs. Yeah. <laughs> like you pour you pour the soda, all the foam's going to flow over. You're like, oh, Sugar Pop's hair is really coming over the sky. <laughs> Damn you, Mendoza. <laughs> So Ryan, you're covered it. It's cool to draw on. I like this paper. Yeah, it worked out real well. Yeah. I don't worry, I'm sending you. I know more. I need I need to I'm actually gonna get some made uh next week for con artists since that Kickstarter's gonna run soon. Cool man. Get what made? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh blanks. Oh, okay, cool. For the new series that we're pushing next month. Yeah. Always offer the blanks now on the Kickstarters. Um, I didn't do it before, but I've been doing it now like all year. And it's like 20 bucks for a blank, but it's like what I do is like I, I'll take 20 of those orders and I'll do a quick pen sketch on it. So when people get that blank, there's that possibility that it's going to show up with uh, already sketched on and stuff. That's cool. And it, um, it does pretty well, man. And then I, I do, I'll do the exact same thing where I'll do, um, I call it the sure thing, and it's that same sketch cover, but you're paying a larger amount of money, but it guarantees you're going to get a sketch, you That's know, when you get idea. your order. We did, from. like, sketch mystery packs, so um, they got random. Everyone had a sketch, and it had a book and a sketch, but it was just depending on what artist you were hunting for. So oh, we, had, cool. we had Mike, yeah. we had uh, Dan Pinocean, we had Art Germ. We had all sorts of cool people that did it. So I might I might be doing that again. What? Yeah, Mendoza got did one. You did one. I, did I think one. you did that for me in Vegas. There I you did. go. We got a buyer right there. He was buying the blanks in the hope of the sketch. So there you go. <laughs> Man, this whole time I have not I had not I didn't have the comments clicked. It just said private chat. So Oh I yes, missed I missed everything. <laughs> we we've been I'm dropping like, no. people in. Yeah, we've been dropping people in here. <laughs> That's awesome. Dang, Terry is just deciding to say everything over here. Look at Terry, 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 and, Terry. Terry. And love. So you got talk. you get two Terrys. You get Mikey and you get Shiftman. Shiftman. Love. Yeah, just a chatty Kathy. Just a it's a chatty Terry. <laughs> I met her in Hawaii at a con. She's cool. Hawaii. Man, I, I think I want to Is do that. that amazing. Go, man. Next year, I'm I'm game. I'm going. Yeah, I was talking to what's his name from from Amazing Jimmy. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but he was just like, yeah, totally. We we want to. You know, you can come and do any show kind of thing. So. Yep, I'll be there. So you, you got. We can, we can go do some trouble on the island. So that's the main island. Is that it? It's, it's on Oahu. It's on Oahu. It's fucking amazing. Oh, amazing! Is Oahu the main island? No, Honolulu is main island. No, so Oahu's is it a small a island? island kind of like Maui small. Island. It's a smaller island. But all the fun stuff <laughs> okay. on it. Yeah, uh, you okay. got seventy-five percent of Hawaii's oh, population awesome. is on Oahu. Oh, okay. August or April? Uh, oh, I don't know when they're doing it. They just said sometime next year. Okay. Is he doing it for sure now? As long as it's not any during any hurricane season. 
<laughs> they don't ever use it. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, I think he's keeping it out of Hurricane territory this time. Well, then uh, it wouldn't be in August or yeah. September. So it used to be in, in, in yeah, you, no, it used to be in August and September, and then they did it one year in May, and it sucked. So it got canceled because of a hurricane one time, and then they switched it over to February, and it worked yeah. out really well. So I think they'll probably keep it around like our winter time. Which is great because it's like 80s there and the okay. water is like okay. math water. Nice. That's cool. Oh, I don't go in the water. I, I was just like about water. to say, it's not like Dan's going to go in the water. <laughs> <laughs> you can look at it though. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like, that's the thing. I don't like the beach. It's gross. Like I don't like sand in between my toes. That's disgusting. Like it's just, oh man. Ugh. And also, I don't like the sun, so it's weird. <laughs> Why can't that be the show for you there, Ted? <laughs> yeah. Dan's like, I, I, I don't like, like I just go from the hotel to the show. Dan just doesn't like, he doesn't like Earth. We have fun at night. It's all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like that Earth. <laughs> He'll be on the first ship to Fuck Mars. Earth, man. Fuck Earth, man. <laughs> This yeah. Place. yeah. So Chan Allen says Mendoza's a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cody cracks up. Cody cracks up. Like he like um, he he always does these shows that are outdoor shows, and then I show up to the, just to visit, and I'm I'm like, I got a hat on, I got my hoodie, I got my hood over my hat, and I got sunglasses and shit, and just <laughs> just covered head to toe, and it's like it's like fucking 87 degrees, and just. He's like, how do you do that? And I was like, hey, I go, my skin looks nice, though. <laughs> Dan, haven't you kind of always been like that, though? Yeah, I just, I, because also, because remember when I used to work for the electric company, guys? Yeah. Because um, um, I worked outside all the time. So every day, man, I'd, I'd be put on a 100 sunblock every day, man, and reapplying that shit all the time. I'm just paranoid. Dell, when am I going to sell a 9.9 or a 10 slap? Oh, eventually, Dell. When I feel like it. <laughs> you feel like it. We have. I mean, we got them. We just haven't done anything with them. Nope. They're, they're sitting in a box. <clears throat> That's the thing. I got all these books that are, are just sitting in a box that I want to go get graded and then then have like a whole section in our, our online store of graded books. Yeah. We I, have that. I did that until it took a year and a half to get books back, and so I stopped. Yeah, so that's that's the thing. I'm just like, I hear it's just taking forever to get people's books, man. It's just CBCS is actually moving a lot faster. They only had the books for like two months, and we got yeah. ours back like really fast. I was impressed. Yeah, right. Oh, I got Cody to had custom said, art labels. Cody, I, I saw Cody at Grand Rapids uh, a few weeks ago, and and he yeah. said that. Uh, a couple more months at CBCS, and they'll be kind of back on track and, and moving a lot faster. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing that, that you can check out, Dan, that uh, Mike and I got to see firsthand is they're, they're going to start doing um, custom CBCS yeah. labels for yeah. artists or for books. They already yeah. talked to me about it. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Like, yeah, you, you you really neat. Them. yeah, it's a really awesome idea. Oh, yeah, they probably caught you at Megacon, huh? Yeah, they talked to me at Megacon. Uh, last year, Cody was telling me about it and stuff. But, yeah, it, it's totally cool. Like, like just that I'll just put my my Still Ill logo, um, yeah. you know, on that that's label. What, that's what we're looking at doing. We're going to do a, a Kincaid exclusive comics one and then a Persuasion one. Yep. And then make sure, see if they can grade it fast so we can get it in the store, you know? Oh, Mike's going orange. Is that in color? It's, no, it's red in person. person. It's orange on my camera. camera. It's a, I hope it's red. I'm not blind. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's looking pretty orange from here, buddy. Yeah, on the camera, it's well. There's a little bit more red. It's orange on the camera. You'll have to buy the original to see red. There you go. Color, Selling color changing, yeah. 
Right. You, you pour hot water on it and it changes color. <laughs> That'd be funny. You make a comic book, you make a cover where it's like, hey, it changes color when you pour water on it. And then you're mm -hmm. like, wait a minute, what happens when you pour water on a sucker? <laughs> oh, you'd be a bleeding cool article like the next day. Totally. I bought a book from Mendoza. You know what he told me what to do? <laughs> yeah. That Mendoza. That guy. Always the jokester. Well, as long as you as long as you make it uh as long as you release it on April Fools, then you're fine, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Then that's that's yeah, it. Right. Oh dude, that was an April Fool's clarify. joke. Why are you pouring water on your comics? <laughs> It's in really small print. It says, don't actually do it. <laughs> I want to say, like, changes color in water, but stays crunchy in milk. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Kid tested, mother approved. So, Dan, do you want to uh, walk us through the campaign here a little bit so they can see what, yeah. uh, what we got? Let's do it. There I should hit go. the save button for this fucking thing. So, uh, awesome. so yeah, we got now we got six days to go, guys. So uh, I want people to start jumping on this. Uh, on average, we have about 700 backers on, on this campaign. So so I think we got some people sleeping on it. But um, but yeah, I just I want everybody to go and check out this Kickstarter. Um, you know, here's a quick rundown. Um, you know what the story is about. Uh, meet the team. Look at that. Look at that huge team. <laughs> you and I, 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 how do I you made, possibly do this with three people dan that's so yeah. many people i made i i made that because uh because polito has his meet the team and it's like fucking 27 people and i was like i'm gonna do a meet the team <laughs> <laughs> it's me, nightmare and our colorist and stuff yeah so then uh preview pages i just i just threw in the pencil you know, as I'm working, that's the, what the page I'm working on right now, actually. And then give you a shot of Cannibal Kitty in her beast mode for this issue. Uh, she's in like a weird nurse uniform. And then, uh, then uh, reward one is always Nightmare herself does her own cover, which is really cool looking. She wanted that like little grindhouse kind of cover and stuff. She's my she's my apprentice, so you can see some similarities in the style. Of course, but it's cool that she's doing it. Yeah, then El Sevilla, man. Um, he did this cover for us last year, but we, we had too many covers, so we banked it. But yeah, it's, it's really awesome. El Sevilla does some really cool stuff. So are these, are all of your, because we're going to go through them all, but I'm seeing two yeah. things. So are you buying, um, are, when they're pledging, you're getting both of these covers at the same time? Yeah, they get, they, I sell them in sets. Uh, I know some people complain, well, I just want the regular. That, that's, that's not how I do things, so. Yeah, it's always a set, you know. So uh, reward one is always just one book, right? Uh, you know, it's just it's like it's just only twenty five bucks. You know, I mean, go try out the story and stuff, you know, um, and then you, and then that's your gateway to to get all the add ons too, and also get your freebies, so, right? Yeah, that's sorry, that's the same thing. yeah. And this is a this is an, an artist where that we know on on Instagram. We're trying we tried her out, uh, Miss You Pacey. Um, is her artist name, and, and she does some really cool digital paint stuff. So she did that. And then uh, Zong Brothers are are my favorite this year. Um, I'm doing a lot That's of business. Rad. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of business with them this year. Um, I found them on Facebook. Uh, I think Ron Sabali has used them first, and then uh, I had to find them on my own, and I did. And <laughs> yeah, he didn't tell anybody anything. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, they're awesome guys, man. I, I like them. It's just two brothers doing this job, man, and they're awesome. They're a really cool anime style. I might and, snatch that from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get you their, their info, dude. And then, um, yeah. yeah, Kendrick, Clinton, right. of course, super awesome. Uh, he's like, what was the, what's the theme? I go, like, a Betty Page bondage kind of look, and that's what he did. I really like how he does the fur like that she's sitting on. It's just really, that shit just looks fluffy. <laughs> and Sun K, of course. Sun K is, is on everybody's Kickstarter, man. She's all over the place. Yeah, Sun's cover is great. 
Yeah, that cover's awesome, man. And, and that's another one we had to bank. We banked it last year. Like we didn't use it. Um, we had to we had to hold on to it. So I was like, let's. This is a powerhouse cover. Let's just hold on to it for next year. Oh, I love the cover she did for us for three. Nice. Yeah, Alexa Lowe is 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 awesome, man. Her, um, oh. her and Isaac Bell did that comic book metal shade, and um, and yeah, both, that shit's cool. They're both awesome artists, man. And she colors all the metal shade, and then she does some of the covers, and Isaac Bell does all the interiors. Um, but yeah, they're a cool team, man. Uh, they they own a they own a Doberman Pinscher. We got an old Doberman Pinscher. You know, it's just a kind of cool thing. Like, uh, but I really yeah, like her. Like, he's nowhere near me. <laughs> yeah, her coloring style is uh is it's really cool. It reminds me of the old like Neo Geo Samurai Showdown uh, covers. He lives the same style. Oh, he's not he lived out here. Uh, awesome thing. Well, he thought he lived in North KC. Oh. Yeah, I thought he lived in San Francisco, but then but you know, no, I hit him up. He actually lives. When you told me he lived in North KC, I was like, shit, he's like yeah. twenty minutes from me. So I hit oh. him up. And he's oh, like, yeah. no, man, I'm in, I'm in Wichita, and that's about two oh, and a half, oh, about two and a half hours away. Yeah. So that's Isaac Bell, man. His his stuff is really wicked. I like his style a lot because it just looks, it just looks fucking nineties. Like the style yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Then Alexa Lowe did the colors on that too. <clears throat> Oh, this guy. I've heard about this guy before. Yeah. Hey, here's that fucking dumb movie, Cruella. <laughs> I, just had to do it, dude. I just, I just like, I just, I really like the look of that movie. So I, I was like, I'm totally going to do a Cruella. Uh, kind of <laughs> and then so, you know, we, I took the font and did the cruel cat and then made a spotted cat instead of a dog. And nice. just fun. And then I always do two rewards. So then I always do like the regular, uh, and then I do a three piece set. So this is a three piece set. So this is, this is uh, Cannibal Kitty in her full human form, then her cat form, and then a full nude of that. Um, I always do a three piece set reward. And then this is the blockbuster homage cover. Um, and then I always I'll put together a pack with a bonus hollow foil cover. So, so then this is the full nude human form, but it's all going to be hollow foil. Right, and then the twelve is me again, but so it's all that shit again, <laughs> but only an original. You get get original uh, color sketch from me, and that's only limited ten people. So that always sells like the first five minutes of the campaign. Um, it used to be open to fifteen people, but it just takes up so much of my time. I had to switch it back to ten. And then the Bill McKay add-on, um, which is really cool. This is uh, the first time. We're trying like a spot foil, and it's I, I put some some video stuff on it. But um, so they're they're spot foiling only the background stuff. It's really it's a really cool process. So it's like really kind of shimmery, like almost like they almost like putting that clear pink nail polish on in a way. It's really cool. But Artist Express is doing that. This is the first time Artist Express trying a spot foil. Uh, Style. Yeah, they've been changing up the way they've been doing foils now so that yeah. it used to be that, that you kind of get the full foil effect, but now they yeah. can kind of place it, it where you want it to shine a little bit more. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The, the foil stamping, yeah. So this one is foil stamped, and then after foil stamp, they print back on it. So you're right. printing right on, the, right on the foil, which is kind of cool. So it's like an after thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I really like it. Nice. That's nice. Right. Yeah. Then... uh. Always, we always offer the back issues for people like, oh, it's part three. What am I going to do? You know, so mm -hmm. we always offer one and two. And, uh, this is one of the things that, uh, for those that are watching and you're thinking about Kickstarter and stuff, this is one of the things that m most people that do Kickstarters completely blank on. Even if, uh, even if they get their their first one done and they plan to do a second one. They don't think ahead and and like, hey, let's make some extra copies so we have them for this next campaign. It's it's yeah. a huge deal um, when you're talking about, you know, people coming into a campaign that, uh, you know, they may not know what the heck it is, so you got to let them start at number one. It's yeah, like we just had that, uh, that whole uh, comics versus manga post yeah. that you and I have yeah. been doing, you know. So how the hell do we start on these things? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's and, and, and it's and it's um it's the theory that you, you can get a new fan any day. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're like, what is this? You, you can be like, like when, when I was at, at Megacon, you know, people were like, what is this? Zombie Tramp. I'm like, oh, it's on 81. It's on issue fucking 81. And like, yeah. they've never heard of it still. So I, I hold their hand and I walk them through it. And I, and I, pull yeah, I used to get, I always pull out some book? books. Yeah. And I, and I get them to buy some books and they walk away happy. You know? so, uh, is that weird know. to anyone else? Because when we were kids, like you jump into Spider Man at 12 years old on issue like 246. Yeah. We yeah, didn't had care. this discussion before. Yeah, we didn't care. Yeah. We started wherever we started, and then yep. we yeah. either went forward or backward, however we wanted to. Yep. Yeah, if you enjoyed it, you followed it. Yeah. If not, yeah. Yeah. It, it is definitely that. a new uh, a new concept, uh, at, at least as far as like people really wanting it. I mean, obviously, we all wanted Spider Man number one, but we were, weren't going to be able to afford Spider Man number one, so we weren't worried about it. We just bought the books yeah. that we could buy, and and uh, we just kind of kept on trucking. But yeah, now, uh, but uh, with indies, it's much easier because we're all even with Dan being at issue eighty one, even that's not an impossible uh, collection to put together. Obviously, there's a shit ton of covers, but if they just want to read the book, uh, it's not a difficult collection to put together. Yeah, yeah. Unless you try and find one of his. Self-published yeah. issues, and that's a bitch. Oh, the run the very first self-published. I don't even have a zombie trap number one. Of the I have one somewhere. Print. I just can't. I don't know where yeah. it, where it is. I don't have the first print, and I used to sell them for five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in Long Beach. Yeah. So that's the sure thing where you know they get a little sketch. Um, it's all bulk. I I started it one time at a at a at a. A bookstore signing where people wanted sketches, but it's like I, I can't do all these sketches, and I'm only going to be there for a couple hours. So I started doing ballpoint pen sketches, and I could do them like in five minutes. So that's that's what I offer on that. Then, then this is a new thing I do now. When a campaign starts now, I'll I'll actually hand draw a cover like and I watercolor paint it, and it's like eleven by seventeen, and all this stuff, and yeah, and then I sell the original. Uh, when the campaign starts, that's pretty good. Then, yeah, then I'll offer it as a printed cover if they want to add it as a cover. And then these are big sellers. Do these do really well for you, Tom? Do I know you did it for the Camp Rad Dog? Yeah, we did them. We did pretty well with them, especially since people really don't know what the hell they are yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, but I think once people see them, I think they're going to be really happy. Yeah, these these are the highest selling thing items that we have that aren't comic books. Are all right. Yeah, so these are the acrylic stands, guys. We did these on Camp Rad Dog. So basically, they're they're plastic figures um, that that stand. How big are yours? About five inches. This one right here is only three. Okay. Um, I started with taller ones, but then the the um, the ability for them to break is is easier. Well, that, so that I, makes I sense. A smaller. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to get these things. We're actually putting the order in pretty soon. Uh, I want to. I I really want to see them. So you've yeah. got a whole a bunch story. of uh, unlocked things as well. Yeah, I always do. I usually start on 30k. I start giving out free stuff, but it's at basically once it's 30k, it's like every 10,000 that we do another freebie. So we got embroidered patch, and then at 5,000 more, I do another add-on cover, and I always we always do like homage themes. So, you know, then we got a magnet, you know, then we did this, uh, this horror sure. magnet kind of cover right here as an add on. And then I started doing all these, all these collector cards and always have the same, um, the same template on the bottom. So every campaign you do is has that same template. So you can start, yep. people can start a little collection. That's fun. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Then I uh, lenticulars. This is the, uh, this was the Lily Munster lenticular that I did, and then we did the uh, alternate version of Eddie Munster. So this is like a female Eddie Munster down here, and, the, and those are always <laughs> limited to a hundred. Uh, and then the uh, every every we always do the pound of flesh with Cannibal Kitty, where right towards the end of the campaign we announce the pound of flesh, and this is. Uh, Number one through thirty, and it's randomly inserted in anybody's uh, package. You know what I mean? And then there's little things you can do to increase your, like, it's basically, you know, put your name in a hat, in a hat, and and when you start adding different items, it um, it puts your name in more than once mm -hmm. stuff to get that cover. 
Nice. And then we offer we offer the this one for purchase with the clothed version. And then uh, this is the first time we're offering this. This is this is a uh, Elena eleven by seventeen particular print. Well, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Then Bill McKay offered up his line work on this, and uh, that sold in fifteen minutes. Nice. And then today was that the hollow foil uh, collector card. And then now when we get to 85K is the Cannibal Kitty Lanyard uh, Nightmare design that today. So I'll reveal that probably tomorrow. So there you go, guys. There is the campaign. Make sure you go check it out. You've got, uh, what did it say, six days left is where we're yeah. at? Six days to go, man. Let's get it. <laughs> go get it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God! How do I get rid of that? There we go. Boom. You got it. <laughs> so many buttons on this side of the screen. So many I'll be buttons. Right back. I'll yeah, be right man. Back. Take your time. Take your time. So let's see where everybody's at here. Uh, Mr. Devolfo is still playing with his orange. He's he's playing with tape. He's like, <laughs> yeah, at this point. No adult supervision. Speaking of adult supervision, what's with this uh, milk crate? Thing. The what? Oh, it, the it's a TikTok crate. challenge. Oh, that's where you that's where you walk up uh, a pile of crates and kill yourself. Yep. Oh, okay. We didn't need a challenge okay. for that one. We, were that we just fucking did it. <laughs> People are stupid. We did shit and didn't tape it, so we couldn't get made fun of. Yeah, it's true. Exactly. Huh. What'd you do? I ran up some shit. Can I see? No, I didn't take that shit. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, not stupid. I didn't need proof. Up. Yeah, I don't want my parents to see that. Oh, look at this. Marissa's doing some uh, some spatter. Nice. Thank you. Fancy pants. I got some glitter. Look at this. Oh, will it better with regular? Would you learn how to do that? Better. That's cool. When did I, it's when did I learn how to do that? Yeah, it's glitter? What is it? Is it a pen? No, it's oh. just no, it's Copics. Oh, okay. Uh, Mike Chrome <laughs> told me that if you like flick, <laughs> you flick your nib, <laughs> um, <laughs> it creates a spatter effect. So. Oh, that's cool. I didn't, I didn't know it worked with Copics. I could do yeah. it with a toothbrush and other shit, but not a Copics. Yeah, I was going to say, I usually do it with toothbrushes. <laughs> yeah, like if you just... Uh, Take like the brush end of your of your marker and oh, put it in your cap. And now I can't do that because Marissa Dunn did it. Yeah, I wish I had that for my it. red here. That would look great. I was gonna put well, some red just... splatter on my thing, but yeah, I had to bring out the toothbrush and mask shit off, and I didn't want to do it. <laughs> well, no, I, I just look like I'm copying her, so I'm I'm just gonna not do it, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just do it anyway. Marissa has raised the bar here. Yeah, right. Yeah, now we got like breakout oil paints next week and shit. Come on. Oh, well, come and that's, on. Uh, I busted out my airbrush. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, April was over oh, here shit. doing airbrushing and uh, man, it's and uh, it's getting, glitter. Yeah, it's getting crazy around here. <laughs> Chicks, man. I remember <laughs> one we I do. I do have oil paints done. <laughs> it went from make sure it's just done to uh, how much shit do we do? I don't do it. Yeah, we're getting all turned on this shit. That's a question with Mike, never with you. She, she said you can't finish, Mike. Oh, I, I can finish. <laughs> you usually finish I'm first. not talking about by yourself. I'm talking about, like, you know, actual <laughs> artwork. That take you oh, 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 that's different. That's artwork. different. Oh, yeah, I don't draw, so I never finish. That's different. That's different. You doodle. <laughs> I doodle once in a while. Sometimes I get paid for it. <laughs> Sometimes you take really fucking long time to do remarks. Sometimes Shannon makes a lot of money off my artwork. No, Sometimes. Ryan did that time. Hmm? I said, no, nah, Ryan did that time. Which one? I don't know. Oh, you're stupid. You're so, <laughs> so, uh, so, Dan, I don't know if you saw this. Uh, uh, Marissa's down here doing spatter paints. Dude, this fucking What's she spattering with? 
Copic. We're freaking Copic in her finger, dude. She's flicking the bean. You're actually flicking the felt tip. Yeah. So it you're, might ruin it. It might ruin it, yeah, yeah. but your ink has to be really saturated. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, the ink is very saturated, apparently. Oh, okay. Ink everywhere. That's crazy. Yeah, um, I wanted to show the acrylic stand what they look like. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. So this is this is a sugar pop one. So just to nice. give people an idea what I always put like the the logo on the bottom of the stand. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, That's really cool. Basically, yeah. all all an acrylic stand is. But it's just, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have yeah. to send me the link to that, too. Yeah, I will. That's dope. So, yeah, the, biggest one I made, the biggest one I made was the Tells a Hill. And I'll never I'll never do it again because so, so many of them came in broken because they're too big. Um, but this is, look at this. This is a three-level acrylic yeah. stand. So yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. it was Holy a shit. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, a diorama. Was, yeah, it's a, it a whole fucking diorama. But yeah, it was just it was just way too big, and it was I I must have tossed it like twenty of them. They were just cracked when I got them. But it's just uh, it was dope though. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I'll never do it again. Yeah, that company that I sent you the link to, Dan, they do those too. Um, but but you can do but you can do three multiple levels, but they don't have to be gigantic like that. Uh, so if you're if you want to do multiple like tiers, yeah, uh, they do it that way too. Yeah, this one came out really nice with the colors, but this is this is a four incher. This is a four inch side grill. Well, that's badass. Yeah, you know what I mean. I really like that one. So I always make. That's always roughly make what ours are going to be. They'll be about four ish inches, something like oh, yeah. that. Yeah, four inches is a pretty good size, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't go any bigger. And how long did it take them to do those? Uh, the turnaround, you're looking at a, probably a three-week turnaround, Ryan. Uh, nothing. That's not bad at all. Wow. All yeah, right. so, so I usually put the orders in for these as soon as the campaign ends. Yep. Um, that way that way I know how many I'm making, and that way I know how many to put in the survey store. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Any leftovers and stuff. But I always account that I'm going to get at least 10 that are going to come in the mail broken. So broken. That's, that's good to know. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a, it's – this one's really awesome, and I always offer the nude version, of course. But yeah, <laughs> it's always fun with Sad Girl because she has her pompadour hair and the in the bandana, and then she has her hair yeah. down and stuff. So. Oh, that's that's awesome! Uh, now I'm super excited about those things. Yeah. So mine is a different company than the one you use, but um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, if we want to, if we want to share links, we can uh, we can kind of get everybody, you know, maybe some some price points and stuff and make sure everybody's paying the, you know, a good price and where it's all coming yeah, from. We'll do, uh, who's washing their hands? Not the what is happening? I need to, I, uh, I had some stuff in my hands, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to rinse off a brush. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah, the, um, yeah, we should, we'll do like a private Facebook message. and uh, Yeah, for sure. But yeah, mine's through an email. But I got I got two companies that I use for everything as far as uh, uh, enamel pins, keychains, patches, uh, acrylic stands, all that stuff. So uh, they made beanies for me for the um, for Tells the Ill with a, with a leather patch with the logo on it and stuff. So nice, That's pretty cool. The only thing is, is that they're a little snug on my giant head. <laughs> 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 I was like, man, this is a little bit tighter than I usually like a beanie. You gotta but, stretch that a little bit. Yeah, I was like, if I just put this over a volleyball for about a month, they'll probably fit. Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my uh, gosh. This guy says that uh, Mike was trying to flick the nib and it got all over his hands. Always. That's, probably. We call that Sunday night. Wow. That's right. It's Sunday, man. <laughs> yeah. Every man has a ritual. You never know what you're going to get. Not here. And especially if Jim's around. Oh, my God. That was fun. Yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty stacked uh, uh, October for sure. Now, Ryan, you, you're launching your thing in September, right? 
September 1st. Okay, so we definitely want to get you uh, and your book on the show here. September 1st um, is like in a couple days. It yeah. is. Holy yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll work Ryan in here uh, in September. I know that um, I'm going to have my own Kickstarter in October uh, for The Legend of Oz. I know that um, uh, C.B. Zane has his Black Rabbit in, in October. Um Oh, somebody else has an October book as well. Oh, Jim Noble has an October book. He's doing his October monsters thing. So we're going to have a pretty stacked uh, October. Should be pretty fun. Tell all of these people to make blanks. Blanks. That's good. Yes, actually. Yeah, yeah if we Absolutely. can get this planned ahead enough, that's a, actually a fantastic idea. I do have Oz blanks. Oh, I can get to all of you guys. I have Oz blanks, so we're safe on that. Okay. We're safe on your side. Okay. Okay. But I'm going to, yeah, I'm definitely going to get con artist ones made. To get out to them before we we do our night. Okay, well, I'll I'll shoot you a message. You tell me where you want to do it because September's open at this point. You want to do it early. You want to do it late. Whatever, uh, whatever works for you, and we'll we'll line you up. So good. Dishes are done, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so behind on cover. I'm still working on Marat Michaels cover. It's like it's been like a month. Usually, I could do a cover in a couple of days, but it's like now it's like, man, I'm just like, hey, Mariah, it's almost done. He's like, okay, <laughs> man, <laughs> just being like, a month behind is nothing. Trust. Me. So, yeah. Daniel, these uh... You're a lazy ass. <laughs> <laughs> you well, I'm lazy, but I'm also very busy and lazy. I'm a bad no, combination you're of the busy, two. You're lazy. So, Daniel, the sketches are know. generally for sale. You'll just have to contact uh, the individual people find out what they're charging, if they're selling them or if they're going to use them for something else. Um, we can already show you that uh, April's is sitting right there. It's ready to go. If anyone wants uh, April's, cool. it is 75 bucks free shipping. Boom. Done. Um, like if you want yeah. full on airbrush. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, everybody else, you just have to contact them. It's basically you know, first come, first serve if they want to sell the pieces. So contact the artists and um, that's that's how you do it and that's how we do it every week here well every week that we're here it's i feel like we've been doing this for like six months but we've only done seven episodes um, the con's <laughs> getting away, yeah. <laughs> yeah the cons started getting in the way a little bit but um uh and we might have a, a little bit of a, a december issue are you guys doing like c2e2 emerald city like what's that looking like for you all uh supposed to we'll see what happens okay yeah, they said that I think they don't tell us if you got into C2E2 till the 29th now. Um, That's okay. I think it's on the 31st, but yeah. 31st now? Yeah, so yeah, I don't know. Tuesday. It's really hard for me to get into repop shows because um, I'm offensive. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping now because it's only a three hour drive for me. So I would totally love to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, I got, what do I got going on? Oh, you know. I got <laughs> well, if if I was tabling, I would just say screw them. You just come sit at our table, and then you'd be fine. Yeah. You're in. You're done. But I'm not, only, I'm not going to table this year. Yeah, I've only done C2E2 once, and that's because Vince Hernandez kept uh, twisting their arm to to give me a spot and stuff. But um, but yeah, so I'll, I don't really have no big shows. I got that Monroe Pop Fest in September, mm -hmm. and then uh, October I'm going to do Baltimore for the first time. So, uh, Shawnee's asking yeah, about the Scare Fair real, in October. Is that real. still a thing? Yeah. So the Scare Fair is only a one day show, and it's it's in SoCal, man. It's in um, where's that shit? Uh, Victorville. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see if it's any. You know, what I mean, we'll we'll see if it uh, doesn't get canceled or nothing. I think it should be okay. But you know, yeah, you I know, know Wendy Shaner's going to that too. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, everybody's gonna be there, dude. I was supposed to go, but I grew up there, and I ain't going back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, David Harrigan's gonna be there. Isaac Bell, Alexa Lowe, um, uh, what's the Ebass is gonna go. Uh, you know, just a bunch of people. Probably Jimmy Noble. He goes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in Arizona now, so it's not too far away for him. Yeah, yeah. So. He sent me a message today. Oh my gosh! So this this tells the ill has been sitting waiting for the books to come in for I don't know how how long, like months and months, like nine months or more. And then we finally got the books in. 
then I told everybody, if you need to change your address, I'm leaving this open for a month. And the 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 second day after I closed him, closed all the things, he's like, "Hey, I just moved. Can can you change my address?" And I was like, "You fucking guy, dude! Like, just just I don't mean, don't just he's going he's going to be at PopCon, so just bring yeah, his shit to happened. PopCon." Yeah, so I was like, "Dude, I go, I already exported this shit. I go, I'm not, I don't want to change the fucking address, dude." And then he was like, "Oh, but I'll be at Monroe. I go, I'll I'll just bring it to Monroe, dude, if you remind me, because I'm just like, God damn it, man." I was like, I left that change of address thing open for a month. He could have fucking did it. <laughs> what is this contraption you've got going on, Ryan? Look at that. It's Dude, I, 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 I don't know where I found this, but yeah, I was like, I can make big circles. Yeah, and little circles. Instead of having like, you know, 40 different templates. Look at you go. Look Man, we you. are seriously leveling up here in episode seven, guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's 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 Mendoza night, man. You can't we can't bitch Look out. Look at that. That's uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Wow. Oh, dude, I never seen that before in my life, and I saw it. I was like, that that that's gonna be brilliant. Instead of having one that only goes to one size, one that only goes to another size. Yeah. Carry so, around, around, around that really gigantic well. circle template with like eighteen circles on it. Yeah. Yeah, that was a pain in the ass. Wild. All right, let's That's have a look. That's the one that we said Steph Wilson needed for the booth. Looks like Marista's <laughs> all done. It's a beauty. Thank you. Nice. She's done. Thank you. Now, of course, April's is done. And Mike, where are you at? Mike, that orange is looking way more red, dude. So it's looking better. <laughs> Thanks. I tried to make it red for you, Tom. <laughs> it's no longer orange. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is pretty much done, I think. I'm going to put a fork in this. Nice. No, don't put a fork in it, man. You get it. Like, someone will buy it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, Marissa, Terry has apparently sent you a message. He's interested in your piece. Okay. Keep your eyes open for that. Oh, I didn't realize my camera was so close. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Ryan, do you still use that thing, that uh, that clamp um, for for your shows where it's like the neck of it like is really stiff to hard, it's hard to bend? The, oh, no. I stop. I stopped taking any of that stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Because like you were, um, I remember I was like, dude, what kind of stand are you using for your live shows? And you're like, you're telling me because it, it held it really, held the phone really well and stuff. It That's works awesome. for a little while, but if you moved at all, the whole thing uh -huh. would shake. Yeah. Yep. The whole thing it just starts. It starts just like springing yeah. back and forth and shit. Yeah. Oh, dude, ask Mike. I went through so many different uh, stands. I have one, two. Three. I have four sitting, five sitting in front of me right now. Yeah, I still have that. I still have the one you used, Brian. I've got it sitting here. It's just not connected to anything. I went through so many stands trying to figure out like what what would work for me. Yeah, I got it right here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right right here. <laughs> it's a freaking clamp, man. Look at that thing. <laughs> so we're in our final roughly 10 minutes here anybody that's watching if you got final questions for uh for dan or anybody that's uh hanging out tonight now is the time um but we're also going to let everybody uh do our uh social media spiel so uh marissa you're all done let them know how they can find you uh, on your socials um you can find me on facebook at marissa pope or on instagram at mac de cool easy. name <laughs> <laughs> we need a shirt that says Sounds yes like... i am mac de barco <laughs> we should we should make that shirt we'll and make then... that shirt and Ryan, how yes. do they? Uh, how, oh, Ryan's trying to uh, to do a little bit of uh, 
dot pattern. Oh, so you guys are all copying my red now. I see how it is. All right. All right. It's really orange in your face, guys. <laughs> orange. Mine actually is orange, so go suck it. I'm God damn it, Ryan. It, it's red. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> it is red. Um, everything on mine is Ryan M. Kincaid. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Or you just go to the website, ryanmkincaid.com, and it links to all that crap. Boom. Just like that. April. Hi. I'm on Instagram under Reina underscore art or Facebook is uh, Reina art. Um, I'm also going to be at uh, Baltimore. I am going to join Wendy Steen Shaner with the Naughty Fairies table. So I'll be there for that. I'm hoping C2E2 and definitely Phoenix Fan Fusion. Groovy. And Mr. Uh, Mark, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> you can find me on Facebook under uh, Mark DeBalfo or uh, <laughs> on Instagram under Mike DeBalfo or the real Mac DeBarfo on Instagram. Is there a real Mark the DeBarfo? Real... Mac the real DeBarfo. Mac DeBarfo. Mac DeBarfo. Yeah, he's the real Mac DeBarfo. I'm just the copycat. And again, guys, if you're interested in any of the pieces tonight, uh, just contact the artists. If they are selling them, they'll they'll let you know what they want to do for them. Uh, Dan's uh, Dan's doing a little bit of inking here as we wrap up, but uh, we'll give you the last word, Dan. Give us uh, just give us the give us the um, final pitch for Cannibal Kitty, and um, of course, do you have a date for uh, Zombie Tramp in October? Uh, no, I would say third week of October. Okay, uh, right before Halloween. That's all. That's all I know. But um, uh, I have dates for for people getting covers done on time. <laughs> <laughs> he has deadlines. <laughs> I gave deadline dates. Um, uh, Cannibal Kitty, six days left, guys. Jump on it. Uh, you'll really like the story. It's fun. It's it's filled with horror and gore, and, and you always got you always got your little nudities and cool shit. Um, <laughs> yes, come on. <laughs> If you like cats, if you like uh, cannibalism, then this is a book for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a fun book. If you haven't tried it yet, we we have issue one and two to add on. It's 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 really cool. Lots of cool free things for you guys just for pre-ordering the book here on Kickstarter. Um, you can find me at uh, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook under Art of Dam Mendoza. And also my Patreon, if you guys are into that, um, uh, it's Art of Dan Mendoza at Patreon. And um, if if you're a subscriber on there, there's exclusive books that you get every quarter uh, mailed to you and stuff. So, uh, so uh, Terry is sending some messages. Mike wants me to draw. I, that's not even that's not even funny, Mike. No, no one needs that. No, it's actually kind of funny. No one needs that. Listen, I have. Uh, what do I have? Two, I think there are two sketch covers in existence uh, that are um, that I've drawn on. I know there's, I know there's one I did at Baltimore for somebody. I can't remember what the other one was. So there's two. There's two out there. They exist. Um, they're they're priceless works of art, of course. <laughs> That's the rarity of them. This is true. This is true. And I have drawn a couple of times in people's sketchbooks. They've just brought me their sketchbook and they're like, hey, just you know, draw something. I'm like, oh, okay. So there is some there is some Tom sketchbook art out there as well. But nothing that is going to be matching up to uh, to these folks here. That's the best looking orange I've ever seen. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nicest brick red orange I've ever seen. I'm fucking impressed. Yeah. Whew. Man. It's almost like this I'll color. Make, I'll make a tutorial on how to make it. On how to make orange into red. You do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we might actually pay attention to. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I might need to. <laughs> I, I need the monetary views. <laughs> Yeah, everybody is super talented. Uh, we've got a nice crew. Always good to have you all in here. Uh, I appreciate it. Dan, we appreciate you chilling with us tonight as well. Yeah, um, it was fun, guys. Well, I enjoyed it. We'll I definitely like, get you. <laughs> yeah, we'll like, definitely. 
the show is, <laughs> but I'll go. No, no one knows what the show is. The show is different every time we do it. Yeah. This is this is about as formatted as it gets. We have Conan's mom in the background and a bunch Heck of yeah. art happening. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we get ice cream. We'll uh, we'll definitely get you back for Zombie Tramp. Um, yeah. Anybody that's watching, basically, what we try and do, and I, I just I talked to Raven Gregory about this today because he's like, "When's it my turn?" I'm like, "Well, when are you going to make a Kickstarter, dude?" Um, yeah, what we try and do right. is we try and and bring a little bit more awareness to people who are running campaigns. Um, and, uh, and that's why all the artists are drawing things from these particular campaigns. So if you've got a campaign that's coming up in the, I mean, I guess, like we talked about October is going to be swamped, but, um, if you've got stuff coming up in the next, you know, two to six months and you'd like to be part of the show, um, you know, just let me know. We'll, we'll see how it fits into the schedule and we'll try and get you on and, and hopefully get you maybe a few more, uh, views for the campaign. Uh, yeah. cause that's the we're trying to do here we're trying to elevate everybody's uh the independent world's boats here um and uh you know and and let the artist draw stuff uh that isn't harley quinn all the time for god's sakes <laughs> <laughs> oh man when i did megacon and someone asked me to do a harley quinn i was just like ah i missed this <laughs> because, <laughs> because there wasn't any many conventions and I, was, I remember being like uh please don't ask for a harley quinn and they're like harley quinn <laughs> But now I'm just like, yeah, yeah, shows are back. Yeah, she's back. Shows are back. <laughs> I was I was pretty sure that uh, Cruella was going to become the replacement for Harley, but the no. movie was just so lame that even though the visuals were cool, uh, it just didn't that didn't pan out. Yeah, that was. I, I went to the theater for that shit. I did too. I'm a big Emma Stone fan, so it's. I was yeah. like, "Yeah, this this looks like it should be cool," and it wasn't. It was. I don't know why you see movies. You don't like any movies. That's not true. That's not true. That's not one true. out of every forty. Do you like? Well, then, then I liked one. Tuesday, I'm going to go check out Candyman. It's, well, I'll just let I'll let you decide for yourself. I saw yeah. it today. Well, I saw it today. I saw see, it. you don't like it. <laughs> It's not. It's not. No, it's not that I didn't like it, but it's. It, eh, okay, it's whatever. How about uh, GI Joe? It's, like, it's like Suicide Squad. Like I didn't hate it, but it's it's. Suicide Squad sucks. It's, it's fine. Wait, the new Suicide Squad? The new Suicide Squad. The new one. I like that shit. That shit was fucking fun. Oh, it was hilarious. Yeah, uh, the first Suicide Squad was stupid. They're just. It just. It's. It's the same complaint from Clerks for the time I Lord of the Rings. That's all he did was just fucking walk. They just walked. <laughs> <laughs> the whole fucking movie was just walking. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the, the new, the new. My like favorite thing is watching movie. Tom's post when movies come out because I'm like, and he hated it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and he hated it. Yeah. Hated it. I, I've only hated a few movies this year. There's only been a few that I've legitimately like. This is trash. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see G.I. Joe. I refuse to see G.I. Joe. See, uh, already stuck I'm not even going to bother with it because I've seen the first two. Uh, <laughs> but basically... Something. The I what? Get past, so was it Tomorrow War or something like that? Oh my that? god, Marissa, you have to get past it. It's That's good. April. Oh April, my god! Sorry. Every every time I watched it, and I watched it twice, I kept like thinking how wet and smelly everybody's shoes must have been. <laughs> Is that that Chris Pratt thing on Hulu yeah. or whatever? Yeah. yeah, it's actually a good movie, but it starts out kind of slow. But it's a good movie. You lost time at slow. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen that. <laughs> no, it, starts, it does start out. You lost time at movie. We just finished the series on Netflix called The New Cherry Flavor. It's it's good. It's pretty cool. Cherry flavor. The new cherry flavor. Watch, it's a horror uh, movie. It's a horror series, and it's like probably like eight episodes or something. And um, Ryan doesn't do horror. It's it's pretty fun. It's Dan, pretty are fun. you gonna go see the new Halloween in, in October? Yeah, get the last Halloween. I can't I wait. Yeah. yeah, I can't yeah. wait. Gotta do it. I got nice. uh, an authentic replica J uh, Mike Myers mask that I bought uh, on. Um, on some website that was going on to business, I was like, "Hell yeah, I get that shit." 
an authentic mask from some website that's going out of business. Yeah, that shit was awesome. That shit was <laughs> it is not authentic. It ain't gonna get crap. It's it dope. Just like it. It looks, it looks just cool. Like the movie, so I'm just like, hell yeah, I got it. <laughs> that's funny. Just don't that wear it to funny. the theater. Somebody will freak the fuck I out. I know, right? Yeah. Cause I already wear that the the coveralls. Like I always, I, I wear that when I mow my lawn every fucking five days. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wear the mask now. That's I know, I wear the mask too. Then the, the mosquitoes won't fucking bite me. But wear the mask. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'll cover up from head to toe mowing the lawn, and a, a mosquito's gonna fucking get in there somewhere. He's bite my yep. face. <laughs> That's how Brian is. That's me, man. That's guaranteed. <laughs> All right, there we go. There's Mike's finale. Awesome. Oh, he just turned his light out on it. Yeah, I just turned my light on. Well, now, like, it's, def out, now it's definitely red. It is. Now it's for sure yeah. Red. Yeah. I tricked you all. It was red the whole time. <laughs> That's an amazing <laughs> illusion. Yeah, that looks awesome, man. That's cool. Thanks. All right, there we go, guys. Uh, we've We've done our time here. Uh, again, thanks, uh, Dan, for, for hanging out. Everybody go check out Cannibal Kitty ASAP. You've got six days left to get part of the campaign. There's still tons of goodies left. Uh, and uh, and we'll, we'll get Dan back for the uh, triumphant return of Zombie Tramp uh, sometime in the next couple of months, which will be fantastic. Yeah. So until it's then, thank you all. Uh, we will uh, we will probably be here next week. We don't know who our sponsor is going to be yet, but uh, we'll figure that out. Again, if you want to be part of the show and you've got a campaign running or coming up soon, let me know, uh, and we'll try and get you into the schedule as best we can. Uh, until then, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Peace Bye. out. Bye.